Hello, welcome to our Recap Plus channel with me, Matthew. Today we will watch a recap movie called Raw Deal, released in 1986. This is a spoiler content video. So please turn on the subtitle and let's start the story. The movie kicks off with a couple of men traveling to a remote location deep in a forest. The men have a sinister look about them. They park their cars at a distance from a cabin, and their leader cautiously gets out of the car. He is carrying a rifle in his hand and walks up to an unsuspecting man, shoots him, and he falls into the water, dead. The hitman then signals to his gang, and they start approaching the cabin. Inside, a few FBI agents are staying to protect a mob witness. They are attacked by the hitman, and all of them are brutally shot to death. The last person to be killed is the informant, as the leader tells him to witness this, before shooting him in the head. Later, the police arrive, and an elderly FBI agent, Harry Shannon, cries over the body of his son, Blair Shannon, who was one of the men protecting the witness. He swears revenge on the mob who took his son's life. The scene then shifts to Mark Kaminsky. He is chasing down a man who is posing as a motorcycle cop. He succeeds, and after dropping the man off at the station, drives home to his wife. His wife is having a drink, and it is clearly not her first drink of the day. She is frosting a cake, and he asks her what it is for. She answers it is for the commemoration of their fifth year in exile. They get into an argument, where she complains about the life they've been reduced to live. Amy hates living in this small town, where nothing ever happens, and all people talk about is crops and things. Mark defends himself by saying that he did the best that he could, but she says the hell you did. Mark says that they gave him a choice, he could either resign or go to trial. The trial was a lost cause, and then he would have been fired, and not been able to even get this job as a sheriff. He then complains about having cake for dinner, and Amy replies that they have become like the cows people raised here, and the greatest contribution cows have to the world is shit. She then throws the cake at him, and Mark tells her that she shouldn't drink and bake. That night, Mark carries a sleeping Amy to bed, and while he's having a drink alone, he gets a call. It is Harry Shannon. He asks to talk to him and tells him to meet him if he wants to see better days again. Mark and Harry meet up, and Harry plays him some clips of a trial. In the trial, Luigi Patrovita is being questioned about how he maintains his extravagant lifetime on meager pay. The investigation is being led by the district attorney, Marvin Baxter. Mark notices Baxter and becomes visibly annoyed. It is revealed that Baxter is the one who presented Mark with the ultimatum to either resign or face prosecution. Harry discloses that Mark did bring in a suspect with multiple broken bones. In Mark's defense, he claims that the man deserved it as he had committed murder, molestation, and rape against an 11-year-old girl. Harry expresses disapproval of the heavy-handed approach of cops during that time and mentions that the public didn't favor such tactics. He assures Mark that Baxter is making life difficult for Patrovita. Patrovita and his right-hand man, Paolo Rocca, have eluded the law for too long. There was a witness whose testimony could have incriminated Patrovita, but due to a leak in the bureau, the witness was exposed and killed. Harry's son also fell victim to this leak. Harry proposes a deal to Mark, suggesting that if Mark infiltrates Patrovita's organization and dismantles it from within, he stands a good chance of being reinstated. He emphasizes that only he knows about this mission due to the persistent leak in the bureau. Mark agrees to the plan and stages his own death in a chemical plant explosion. Receiving funds from Harry for expenses, Mark adopts the identity of a convicted felon named Joseph Brenner. Harry's strategy is for Mark to harass a rival mob boss causing pain to Patrovita. Mark, now posing as Joseph Brenner travels to Chicago and visits a joint owned by Martin Lemonsky, the rival mob boss. There, he exposes a rigged table, inciting chaos. Mark defeats the men who confront him and drives a fire truck into the restaurant and casino. To further antagonize Lemonsky, he locates Lemonsky's girlfriend, robbing her of her jewels and her chauffeur's car. Subsequently, Mark gains access to an elite casino at a fancy hotel, meeting Rocca by convincing the bouncers that he is a thorn in Lemonsky's side. Rocca is subtly impressed by Mark's determination, but Max Keller, in charge of handling various matters, remains suspicious of him, particularly because Mark expresses interest in Keller's job. Rocca instructs Mark to visit the cashier for $1,000 chips and enjoy himself. Mark leaves, promising Rocca that he will check back with him. Down at the casino, Mark encounters a striking woman named Monique, and they engage in some witty banner. As Mark departs, a detective sitting in a car takes notice of him. Three of Rocca's men follow Mark into an alley and attack him, but Mark effortlessly overpowers them. 
Detective Baker arrives to check on him, and Mark provides the name Joseph. The following day, Detective Baker and his team raid one of Patrovita's hideouts, seizing around $100 million in cash and heroin. Enraged, Patrovita questions Raka about finding a replacement for their comrade killed in a shootout with Leminski. Raka insists on meeting Mark and recruits him against Keller's objections. As Mark leaves, he encounters Monique again, and they end up going to his place and getting drunk. In their intoxicated state, they stumble towards the bedroom, and Mark seemingly passes out. Unbeknownst to Monique, Mark is awake and overhears her calling Keller with his fake identity info. The narrative then shifts to Mark joining Keller on a mission, skillfully saving a man's life when Keller is about to kill him. At a party, Raka informs Mark that Patrovita wants to meet him. Patrovita questions Mark about his history of killing, and Mark confidently admits to having killed three men. However, when asked if he would like the names and addresses, Patrovita is irritated, and Mark's smart remark prompts Patrovita to ask him to leave. Turning to Raka, Patrovita instructs him to give Mark a chance to impress them first. Mark seizes this opportunity by proposing a plan to retrieve the confiscated $100 million. His suggestion involves posing a bomb threat to prompt the police to evacuate the building where the money is stored. To make the scheme more believable, they plant a smaller bomb at a police station, inducing nervousness among the cops. Simultaneously, we see Keller encouraging Monique, but she insists she hasn't found anything incriminating about Joseph, hinting at her growing fondness for him. During dinner, when Monique tries to take their relationship to the next level, Mark reveals that he has a wife. This prompts Monique to angrily remove the dress he bought her earlier and fling it at him before storming out. The day of the heist arrives, and Patrovita's men, disguised as the SWAT bomb disposal team, infiltrate the evacuated building to break into the locker and retrieve the money. Simultaneously, Mark and Keller embark on a separate mission to assassinate Leminski, which proves successful. Keller, persistent in his suspicion about Joseph, pays an informant to reveal the real Joseph Brenner. Discovering the deception, it is revealed that the leak Harry mentioned to Mark is Marvin Baxter. Patrovita orders someone to be killed, and Keller proposes Brenner as the target. Mark accompanies Keller to a cemetery to eliminate the target, which turns out to be Harry Shannon. To save Harry's life, Mark blows his cover and kills Keller, while Harry gets hit in the process. After ensuring Harry's safety, Mark escapes with Monique's help and drops her off at her place, instructing her to head to the airport. Mark then prepares an arsenal of weapons in his room. Driving to one of Patrovita's gravel pits, Mark launches a deadly assault, killing everyone present and stealing a large amount of drug money. This attack makes headlines, with Patrovita, Raka, and a nervous Baxter watching the news. As an elevator arrives, Patrovita's men unleash a barrage of bullets, but it opens to reveal an empty space. Mark, who was hiding on top of the elevator, initiates his attack, eliminating all of Patrovita's security and goons, including those responsible for killing Blair Shannon. Raka and Patrovita attempt to hide in a back room, but Mark kills Raka in a hail of gunfire and shoots a fleeing Patrovita in the back. Upon exiting, Mark encounters Baxter, who desperately tries to explain that things aren't as they seem. Recalling their history, Baxter admits that what he did to Mark five years ago was a big mistake. Mark responds, stating that due to Baxter's actions, many people lost their lives, labeling it as poetic justice. He hands Baxter a gun, repeating the same resignation ultimatum Baxter had given him five years ago. As Mark starts to walk away, Baxter attempts to shoot him, but Mark is quicker, turning around to shoot Baxter first. After Mark leaves, the police, led by Detective Baker, arrive at the scene. Baker's partner questions who he thinks committed the act, and Baker responds that he has a good idea. The scene shifts back to Mark, who drives to the airport in one of Patrovita's cars, tracked by Baker. Mark hands Monique a bag containing a quarter of a million dollars, instructing her to leave. She gives him a hug and departs. Baker catches up to Mark and remarks that he always suspected Mark was one of them. In the final scene, we see Harry in a wheelchair, refusing physical therapy after being crippled from the earlier attack. Mark walks in and asks him the same question Harry had asked him at the start of the movie. Mark expresses his desire to see better days again. Behind an unsuspecting Harry, Mark makes him stand up. Revealing that his reunion with Amy has resulted in them expecting a child, Mark shares the news that they need Harry's help. Mark asks Harry to be his baby's godfather, emphasizing that Harry needs to walk for that. When Harry struggles, Mark questions whether he would have given up on walking if Blair were here, motivating Harry. With a tremendous effort, Harry takes a few steps, stumbling on the last one. Mark supports him, and they share a laugh. 
To watch more video like this, click on the videos on your screen and don't forget to let me know how you feel about today's video in the comments down below. And at last I will say stay safe and stay healthy. See you next videos.